Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for joining us at our workshop, The Proven Wealth Building Process. My name is Annie, and I am from Ball City Collective. And joining us today, as you probably already heard from our chat, is Jonathan and Jacob, and Enoch will be coming in shortly. Um, moving on to our next slide. So who is Ball City Collective? Well, if it's your first time meeting us, we actually are um, an organization where we are working towards not only modernizing women's workwear, as you see on the left side of the, of the screen, but we're also working on cultivating and creating a lot of workshops and series to elevate ambitious young women to achieve and succeed in their careers. Even though we say young women, we also are very like, open to like our male counterparts too, attending our um, workshops as we have a few of them joining like since the workshop number one to our workshop 15, which is this one. So very excited to have everyone here today joining us and moving on to the next slide just to keep things going quicker so we can get straight to our amazing presentation from our two lovely gentlemen um if you are interested and are excited and like like want to screenshot parts of the presentation that like resonates with you don't hesitate to and don't forget to like take ourselves at bossycollect.ca as well as rise above finance that way you can we can like join in on the same assignment as you as well as repost on both of our accounts directly. And if you're interested in jumping in on like LinkedIn as well as like think about what else I can write on LinkedIn for today or this week, feel free to recap where you learned from Jonathan and Jacob at this workshop. And don't forget to tag us so we can also like leave some wonderful comments below for you um, on the day you post on LinkedIn. So Without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic on to Jonathan and Jacob for them to take away their amazing presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Annie. And yeah, you've been tearing it up on the gram with those reels and the story posts. I don't know if you guys had a chance to see them, but Annie is a natural, so you guys better check those out. Um, without further ado, though, uh, we just want to thank you so much for taking your Saturday morning here to, to spend some time leveling up in terms of your personal finances. Today, we're going to be talking about something called the proven wealth building process. And so there's a lot of different information online, and it's, it's really difficult to know which ones you want to filter in, filter out. And so hopefully our goal here today is for Jacob and I to be able to introduce some different uh, ideas and concepts that may be really easily digestible and may help you with your personal financial goals as well. And so my name is Jonathan. This is my business partner and my my best bro. Uh, it's a nice two in one package, Jacob. And today we're going to be going through this process here with you. So as we go into it, uh, before we do get started, we want to quickly talk a little bit about video etiquette. For those of you who have been working from home, no surprise, same deal as always. Uh, please do keep your videos on if you can. We have some banger memes and uh, jokes throughout the presentation. We've been practicing hard, so we'd love to see your reactions rather than just seeing Jacob. Uh, laugh at the exact same joke and give me that half-hearted laugh uh, as always. Um, so please do, if you can, keep your videos on. We really want to make this more of a conversation rather than uh, like a lecture, um, right? Is uh, We find it's more engaging that way and it's, uh, it's a lot more memorable and for, fun for us as well. Uh, also, do please uh, stay muted unless you have a, a question. You can cut us off at any time, right? Again, we just want this to be more of a conversation. And if you are more on the shy side or you don't want to interrupt us because you're actually really polite, uh, then you can feel free to just type in the, the questions into the chat function below as well. You'll see yeah, it on the bottom right. Yeah, oh, feel free to like interrupt Jonathan just like this. Yeah, like, just like if it's weird if you guys are, just have some questions or just curious about something, just it's supposed to be really casual. So yeah, we like it better this way. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, let's get started here then. So the overview of the workshop itself, essentially, what is it that we wanted to talk about? Well, for those of you who are from Vancouver, there's a class called Planning 10. And there's always the joke that goes around that Planning 10 or school didn't really teach us a lot of life skills, things like how to fix your tire, how to do your taxes, how to plan your finances, right? And so our specialty is around that financial planning. And so we really thought about what are some things, some concepts, young people should really have a good grasp at. So moving forward in life, they'll be able to manage this really important part of their life, this part that really ties into all the different aspects of their life as well. And so we decided, here we are, insurance planning, managing debt, emergency fund planning, investing, renting and owning a home responsibly, and building wealth and being outrageously generous. These are some of the most important fundamental key concepts you have to really understand in order to be able to build that proper financial plan. And on top of this, there's actually an order, a sequence, a step-by-step -step order that we want to follow before jumping into the 
the, the last step or going into uh, the middle step, whichever seems most interesting. It actually makes sense for us to have a step-by-step -step process. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And before we do get started right into the content, the exciting things that we have planned for us, we did want this to be a rather engaging conversation. So we want to get to know you a little bit. So what brings you here today? And it's going to pull up a poll. Um, and feel free to just check the chat box. I think it's going to pop up here. And we want to know, are you more of a brand new individual who is ready to get responsible with their uh, personal financial planning? Or would you call yourself more of a financial connoisseur, uh, maybe a savant of some sorts? And you just want to level yourself up. What is it? We just want to see. Uh, just throw it into the, the chat function below, and we, we'd love to see. Has it popped up already? I don't see this yet. I saw it, but I don't know where it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, if you click the bottom right thing, the triangle square circle, the Squid Game looking logo, and it hit full, <laughs> I think it's there. There it is. Oh, you're right. I hope everyone gets my references. There are a lot of pop culture, hip, cool references going on, so I hope everyone gets them. We think they're hip, so we'll find that soon. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Um, so yeah, what brings you here today? Want to learn more about personal finance, and I don't know where to start. Or B, I have a good amount of experience, but I want to level up. Or C, I've been watching too many K dramas and thought this would be a better use of my time. I totally relate to that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Alrighty, already. Just waiting for a couple more um, posts to come in and then we can share the results. Cool. Yeah, because I know uh, some of you guys have actually been to some of our previous uh, webinars too. So, There'll be some uh, beginner and advanced stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We can definitely go as advanced as you guys want for the Q&A. Um, yeah, we'll start with some of the foundations that you guys have seen before. Absolutely. OK, awesome. So for the sake of time, I think we're going to keep things moving here. Um, we have a lot of content to cover, and we want to make sure it's uh, nice and con uh, concise here. So moving forward. OK. Oh, let's see the full, the full oh, first. Actually, sorry. Do you want to share it, uh, Andy? Oh, okay. So we have four votes. I'm not sure if we can share it. Hmm. Everyone should be able to see the results um, if they go to the poll, I believe. But so far we oh, have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah, the majority of the votes are, I have a good amount of experience, but want to level up. Uh, and there's a few votes for, um, I have no idea where to start. And this they seem to be the beginners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So nice mix, nice mix. Um, no one voted for the K-dramas. I guess I'm the only one who's wasting their day. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to pretend like I didn't say that. Anyways, um, we're going to move on here. And now that we know a little bit more about you, we want to talk to you a little bit about ourselves too, our favorite thing, the best part of the presentation. And so who are these handsome looking gents on the screen? Well, let us, let us introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Jonathan, and I'm a financial security advisor. So what that means is my job is to really just understand what success means, what people's goals are to them, and help them put them on the right pathway to achieving their goals. In terms of how I found myself even in the industry and why I'm sitting in front of you today um, doing these workshops, it actually had to do with my own family's finances. So growing up for me, uh, I don't know how many of you have ever had to move before, uh, move houses, but I had to move every six months to two years or so because uh, my dad, who was the uh, sort of the decision maker uh, with the personal finances of our family, he didn't do the best job. And it, again, there's no one to blame. The educational system didn't really teach us how to do this, but that caused us to have to move all the time. And there was this one summer where we had a huge inheritance. It was a couple hundred thousand dollars, essentially. And we took that money and my dad did what he thought was best for his family. He went straight to downtown Vancouver. And we bought a sub penthouse. Well, we were actually renting and we, we bought multiple BMWs, luxury clothes, you name it. We were just spending a ton. And in a matter of months, we had to move again because we ran out of the money. And so I remember just thinking to myself, you know, if my dad just had someone else to talk to that he trusted uh, to see all his options before just committing to one, then really his life could look really different that day or in the future. In fact, his entire family's life could look so different too, right? And so I remember thinking, what if I could be that person? There's not a lot of people I think who are willing to. Um, so what if I could be that person where if my friends came to me or if someone wanted to take the time to have a conversation with me <clears throat> to see all their options before just committing to one, 
um, so that their kids don't have to move, right? And so that's my goal, essentially, to be able to create that change in someone's life, because personal finances are ultimately tied to so many different parts of their um, people's lives. And so that's my story. And that's really why I'm sitting in front of you guys today. Jacob, did you guys, did you want to share a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. Um, my name is Jacob. And uh, for you guys have, who haven't met me yet, um, there's, there's so many reasons for me to be in this industry. Um, but there's one that really stands out in particular. So like when I was 17, uh, my dad suddenly passed away. And so since then, I've been managing my family's finances. And so in addition to that, um, in addition to that like, real life experience, uh, I had the privilege of meeting some really amazing mentors over the last six years. So I wouldn't be sharing some of their content with you guys. And so it's not just like some everyday stuff. These are just some of the best guys uh, in Canada. So just to give, give you guys a little bit of an idea of who these guys are. So like one of them is like a professional stock trader. And like just to, so you have an idea of his caliber, uh, in 2014, he made $1.4 million US. And he did that in four hours. And the second mentor, uh, he's a portfolio manager in Toronto. And he manages a portfolio of about $6 billion. Uh, and the third one is a uh, financial advisor here in Canada, and his uh, average client has a net worth between twenty and fifty million dollars. And the reason I mention this is because uh, my mentors taught us a process that um, that works really, really well. And what they were showing us was that people who are successful with money, they all do the exact same thing. And it was like unbelievable. When I was looking at all these different plans, I was like, these guys don't even know each other. But they all do the exact same thing. And so, uh, yeah, like I was shocked to find out that like people who are financially independent, there's a, there's a repeatable process for that. And so G and I are really excited. But today I'm going to show you guys a little bit about that process, a little bit of an introduction. And then you guys can uh, hopefully ask questions about that as we go through. Oh, yeah. With that being said, Jacob will occasionally call me G or Jonathan. It's a long story, but G Moon is my Korean name. And yeah, it's a long story. But that's if he calls me G, he doesn't mean I'm a G, but he's calling me G. <laughs> You're a G2. Oh, yeah. okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate What's that. funny is that I literally made that same mistake last presentation. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Now we're recorded forever, so everyone can for see. Sure, for sure. Okay. Yeah, oh, gosh. Okay. Anyway, so uh, let's go on to this. So uh, why this process? So there are tons of ways to make money. Okay, you guys have probably seen like YouTube, Google, et cetera, right? Um, but we love this process. And we're teaching this specific process because we know that millions of people have already gone through this process. It's been tested with empirical data. It's really simple, okay? It has been proven to work and anyone can do it. So that's why we teach it, okay? And then is, the chat is going off a little bit. So pardon me, I can't look at both or else okay, I'm gonna lose focus. Um, but anyway, here we go. So uh, it's important to know that there's nine steps in this process, okay? I wanna start at step nine, okay? Because it gives you guys an idea of what we're gonna do uh, throughout these steps. And also it's gonna show you guys what we want for you guys as we go through, okay? So step nine is called, uh, building wealth and being outrageously generous, okay? And so uh, step nine has four parts to it. And the first part is life-changing money. And that's defined as being able to walk into any restaurant that you want to and ordering whatever you want, okay? So a lot of people think that like life-changing money is like millions of dollars or like owning a Lamborghini or something like that. But really life-changing money can be as simple as eating out at the restaurants that you want to, okay? So that's what we want for you guys. The second thing we want for you guys is to work because you want to and not because you have to. So here's an example. Uh, here's a guy who's, uh, whose name is Tim Hobbs. Uh, he's 39 years old. And when he was 39, uh, he had the ability to retire if he wanted to, never had to work again. So now he works as a librarian and that's because he wants to, and not because he has to. Okay? So that's what we want for you guys. Another guy here, this is uh, my friend James. So he's 29 years old, just 29, it's crazy. And uh, he lives in Bali. And basically he teaches uh, English online for like 20 hours a week. And then the rest of the time he's like on the beach and he like practices his videography skills. So he has a drone and those kind of things. And so the reason we mention this is because, you know, people are at their best when they're doing something that they love. And so that's what we want for you guys. Two more things here. Um, this next point is about um, being outrageously generous. And it's hard to describe. So I just tell the story sometimes. So this is my mentor, Bao. He's the one who made $1.4 million in four hours. And uh, a while back he was traveling in Thailand and uh, he was just uh, walking in, Part of the rural parts of Thailand, and there was this woman who was just minding her her stall, sweeping the streets and the stairs by her stall. And he was like, "Wow, like this woman is obviously working really, really hard." Like, I just wanted to like praise her for her diligence. So he like took out his wallet and took out just some bills and gave it to this lady. And this lady like is not used to receiving like a tip for doing just her job, right? Just her normal work. 
And like, she was like floored because this money probably made her entire day's salary. And so for her, it was like, wow, like this is like, this is really crazy. She got really emotional. And as you probably know, like a dollar in Thailand goes a lot further than it does here, right? And Bao just gave her some money like that. He makes that money in like 10 seconds. So he's like, wow, like that was amazing. So he pulled out his wallet again and he pulled out all the bills inside of his wallet and gave the entire thing to this lady. He was traveling, right? So he had a lot of bills on him and he probably made it her entire year, right? Or maybe two years or something like that, right? And so that's what we want for you guys. We want you guys to be outrageously generous uh, because generosity can really transform a person's life and also multiple generations. Right? And last thing is this, uh, we want you guys to be able to protect your family along the way. So the story that we always tell sometimes is about um, our mentor, Ivan. And so um, Ivan, one time he got a call in the middle of the night and it was his best friend's uh, wife. And the wife said, Ivan, please tell me that my husband bought life insurance. And Ivan was like, yeah, 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 he did three months ago. What happened? And so what happened was that uh, Ivan's best friend was riding his motorcycle. He got knocked off his bike by another car and he fell over the yellow line into incoming traffic and he got smoked by another car. And so uh, Ivan showed up at the funeral and the wife had three kids and he got to present them with a check for a million dollars. And what that million dollars meant was that that mom, as crazy as that life, her, her life had become, that meant that she could retire early. That meant that she could pay off her mortgage. That meant the kids could still go to school, right? And so what that means is that, you know, this husband was still able to provide for his family, even though he was no longer there. And so that's what we want for you guys. All this other cool stuff, like all that, uh, you know, going to restaurants and working because you want to, like, that's nice. But also if something happens to you on the way, we want to make sure that you guys are protected. So hopefully that was kind of interesting. Um, but basically that's what we want for you guys. And that's like the vision that we have. And so let's go into the content now. This is the part where you guys can start taking notes. This is actually the meat of the content. And so, uh, let's begin. So this is what gets G and I a lot when we talk about personal finance. Okay. When you think about personal finance, right? Everyone thinks about the, the same stuff, right? They think about, okay, let's start with investing either crypto or like Vancouver or real estate. That's like the most, everyone like asks us questions about that. Right. And the problem with that, right. Is that. Now, I think it's actually, there's no problem with that. Like when you have that, you kind of like have your house in place and then you like have some investments, there's more investments, maybe like a second house, maybe a car, you get that, right? And all these assets are like stacking on top of each other. And the way that our mentors see it is like this tower is get, they're like building a tower that gets taller and taller and taller. And the concern is that that tower starts leaning over and it could come crashing down, right? And so what we want to do is make sure that the foundation of that tower is really solid, okay? And the foundation of that tower, right, is what we call insurance and an emergency fund, okay? And the reason why we have this in place is because we can make a plan from A to B for retirement or for buying a home or for any other big plans, right? But if any uncontrollable event occurs between A and B, and here are some examples, right? That plan totally falls apart and becomes totally irrelevant, okay? And so you can have like the most, the greatest investment returns you could have an insane income. You could be just like a really, like you could be a super disciplined saver. But if any of these three events occur between A and B, that plan becomes totally wiped out, right? So the key takeaway from this slide is that there's nine steps in this process and you cannot skip steps, right? First, you have to complete level one completely. Then you have to complete level two, right? And so on. And my mentor, Bally, calls this leveling up the right way, okay? And so that's the key thing here. And the thing is like everyone, oops, here we go. Everyone wants to start with investing and we get it. Like that's a really cool, that's a really cool, interesting part, right? But if you start with investing, that's like you're building a tower, but on quicksand. Okay. So let's begin now by talking about step one and that's about insurance. So imagine for a second, okay, you guys are uh, applying for a brand new job. Okay. And these two jobs that are available and trust me, this will make sense in just a second. Okay. So there's two jobs that are available. You can only apply to one of them. And because I lack creativity, this first job is called job A. Okay. And so job A pays you a whopping 100K. Okay, pretty good, especially for any of you guys who are first out of school. Okay. And after tax, that's 77.5K. Okay. But what happens is if you get sick or if you get hurt and you can't work, unfortunately, uh, this job is going to pay you absolutely nothing. Okay. And then there's job B. And then you look at the fine print for job B and you realize something. You're like, hmm, this job is the exact same as job A in every way. The exact same tasks, exact same coworkers, exact same company. And like, what's the catch? Well, the catch is you get paid a little bit differently. So this job pays you 75K instead of 77.5K. Yeah. And my cursor just stopped loading. 
Did you get that here? Did you do my screen freezing yours too or? No, oh, it's working. No, could you could you just toggle it for me? Uh yeah. no, like yeah, got it. Can you uh load up the 75k? Oh, do you not see 75k? Oh no, it's it's frozen on mine. Oh no. It's just me. I don't see it on mine either. Oh really? Okay, cool. Uh yeah, well, we'll just refresh it, G. We'll see how it goes. Sure, sure. I was like getting so pumped too. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Like... Everybody <laughs> hang on to that note. I'm gonna refresh it. Cool. Can make like two, two right easy. now. Keys. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Okay. Everyone's like, what's job B? <laughs> Over. I, I'm sure that's exactly what they're thinking right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me know the good man. Okay. Do you see me running the slides? Uh, share screen first. Here it's loading. I'll connect to the remote. Yep, it's working now, I think. Okay. Can you connect in? Oh, oh yeah. can you launch remote or? Yes, yes, yes. Nice. There you go. Okay, cool. Let's see. Can you pause all alpha two? Sure. Okay, we're good. All right, cool. So okay. back to what we're talking about. So there's you. two jobs, right? And you can only apply to one of these jobs, right? So job A pays you 75.5K. If you get sick or hurt, unfortunately, it pays you nothing, right? And here's job B, and it pays you a little bit differently. It pays you 75K instead of 77.5K. But if you get sick or hurt and you can't work, this job is going to pay you 66K tax-free until age 65. Okay. So think very carefully. You can only apply to one of these jobs. Which job would you apply for? So feel free to uh, share your answer in chat, right? And your answer if you would like to. And we'll see what you guys think. So job A, right? This is a job that has 75K, 75.5K, and the job B has uh, 75K. And it was a little bit different in the way that it's structured. So if you guys pick only one job, which job would you choose to apply for? That's not a trick question, by the way. Nice. I see Kiona says job B, cool, with a lot of exclamation marks and, and question marks. marks. There's no right or wrong answer. So whichever you feel yes. you're leaning towards more. It might be just Kiona who's going to get hired for this job, by the way, at, at the way that we're going here. I can see Wilson's thinking really hard. I appreciate that. Nice. Ooh, job A, because more money. Oh, true. Nice, nice, nice. Good. Cool. So basically, uh, what you guys might realize is uh, there's actually no right answer here, right? And so Kiona basically said, you know, what, job B, question marks and exclamation marks, maybe because there's more security there. And then Wilson says, hey, job A, because you get more money, right? And the key thing is there's no right answer. It all comes down to somebody's personal values and their risk tolerance. Right? And actually what happens is most people will pick job B. And the reason why is because people tend to like that security, but there's no right answer, right? And this is actually an analogy for disability insurance, right? So every job that exists right now is job A, but every job that has disability insurance is job B. Right? So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll do one more exercise here that will hopefully clear things up. So we're doing a game now. Jonathan is an amazing artist. So he's going to draw something. And you guys just have to guess and chat what that's going to be. You guys have a prize. Whoever can guess what Jonathan is drawing first. OK? Yes. And hopefully yes. your uh, chat is working. Don't worry about that link. You can just watch the screen. Yeah, don't worry about So one. feel free to guess what is going on here. All right. I know some of you guys have two people. Who's that Pokemon. Hopefully everyone gets that. Okay, what is going on? You should get it already. It's so obvious. Feel free to guess. This is not abstract, by the way. Yes. A duck. Oh, Selena's getting there. Oh, oh, that's not quite. I'm gonna sweat in a yes. bit. If you got it right away, I was like, okay. Sorry. Not a duck, Selena. We're close though. An albatross. Ooh, not bad. Not bad. It's a bird. It's a bird. Cool. <laughs> Come on now. A crow, an eagle, not quite. Graham has not seen this before, so here we go. Lunch. Okay. Did you say lunch? Lunch. <laughs> so funny. A uh, Pidgeotto. Oh man, there's a there's oh, a no. moment of culture in this in this group right now. That Pokemon because it's not funny. quite, not quite. I'm gonna give you guys another like Ooh, third. golden goose. Graham what? knows what's that? up. Oh, well done, Graham. Well done. Oh, you wow. and can. We'll talk to you afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is a golden goose. You guys can keep guessing if you want to, but yes. How is that a goose? You just got ripped on by somebody in the chat. How is not a goose? I don't, maybe yeah. you haven't seen a goose before. Good job, Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> that was my reaction when I first saw this drawing too. Okay, there's a reason to why we're doing this, by the way. We're just not just like, this is fun, but there's a reason for this too. Okay, so here we are. We've got a golden goose, 
And on the right side, what are those? Right. Hopefully, you guys understand those are golden eggs. Okay. So golden goose lays golden eggs. Unfortunately, these eggs don't hatch more geese. They just they're just golden rocks. Okay. And so if I have to ask you guys, okay, you have two options here. You can either protect the goose, okay, or you can protect the eggs. Okay. Which one would you just protect if you can only protect one of them? Okay. Let's see if, what do you guys think in chat. You so can only protect one of these, the goose or the eggs. Okay. You protect the goose. No, but the eggs fertilized, they are not. They do not hatch They're anymore. The bricks. They don't lay any more geese. That's right. Let's okay, see. Mal one. says we have, we the have goose. For goose. Graham says the goose. We Annie says the eggs. goose. Liz says the goose. OK, interesting. More goose. more goose. OK, OK. Sweet. Yeah, and well, that kind of makes sense, right? Because the goose is going to create all these eggs, right? And so what happens is actually this is an analogy uh, for insurance as well. So watch this. So the goose is actually you, OK? Specifically, it's your income, OK? And of course, just yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's the, the goose is you, okay? Um, and the eggs represent your assets, okay? So, for example, like that represents your house, right? Thanks, bro. Uh, represents your car, right? And represents uh, maybe like your boat, right? Nice. Thank you, G. <laughs> oh, I got you. <laughs> cool. So, those are, this is what it represents. Here. This is one side represents uh, your income, one side represents your assets. And what happens is most people will actually choose to protect the eggs instead of the goose. They'll choose to put to, to protect their house, their car, their boat, right? And what happens is they'll put insurance on their house. They're like, oh, that makes sense. Let's put insurance on a car. Let's put insurance on our boat. In fact, let's even put insurance on our teeth, right? Let's protect our teeth. But for some reason, it's not mainstream to protect our income, to protect ourselves, right? And so this is a little bit of an abstract drawing. So we're just going to go back to the side presentation here. Mm -hmm. um, to make a more. If anybody wants a copy of this, let me know. I'm selling this for like 15 bucks. That's a great deal. So yeah, just <laughs> the hustle is real. Okay. So let's make this a little bit more uh, concrete here. Okay. So once again, here's your. Uh, this is a contemporary art version, so not as valuable as G's. But here we go. We have the goose. Okay, that's you, and you have your assets here on the right side. Right. And so like I was saying, your income, right, paid for the house. Your income funded your car. That your income funded your boat. If you have a boat, that'd be crazy. Right? But these are, this is why it's so important for us to protect the income. Okay? Because without your income, don't even think about retirement, don't even think about saving for these major goals. Right? You have basically no options. And so the key point of that activity was you need to protect the goose. Right? Because you are the goose, you need to protect your income. Okay? And so here are just some examples of something, some things that can reduce your income. And so I go back to my dad as an example. So my dad, even before he passed away, as soon as he got diagnosed with cancer, he couldn't work anymore. And because he wouldn't, couldn't work anymore, he couldn't generate an income, right? And so that's why it's so important for you guys to protect your income, to protect yourself, okay? And so some of you may be thinking, oh, I actually have uh, insurance at work. And you're right, you probably do, which is fantastic. Um, but we always want to make sure that your insurance doesn't have any of these four red flags. And this is probably the second most important part of the entire presentation. So definitely write this down if you haven't seen this already, okay? So the first thing we want to do is make sure that your uh, insurance is indexed to inflation. And that's because you know a dollar today is worth about 50 cents 25 years from now. Okay. And what happens is if you if your disability insurance is not indexed to inflation, that means that you're gonna lose purchasing power as time goes on. And you won't be able to purchase the things that you need. Okay. Second thing we want to make sure is that your coverage is at least 66%. And the reason why is because if your income drops by more than a third, that's when families start to run into a lot of problems. Okay. Uh, third thing is we want to make sure that your benefit continues to A65. So what that means is your payout continues to A65. So just say that you get sick or hurt and your income, it'll cover your income for one year or two years, right? Imagine if you don't have income for three years though, or five years or until A65, right? As you can see, that's why one make sure the benefit period continues all the way till A65. And the last part here is probably the most important, okay? And it's called definition of disability. Okay? And so what definition of disability means is how disabled do you need to be in order to claim your insurance? Okay. And you can have you can have one of two definitions. So the first one is called any occupation. Okay. And what that means is if you're no longer able to do any job, only then can you claim your insurance. Okay. And some of you might be thinking, that's that's not so great, right? Because you pretty much have to be brain dead to claim that insurance. Right? And so that's not the one we want. The one that we want is called regular occupation. And what that means is 
if you're no longer able to do your current job, then you can claim your insurance. Okay. So huge difference there and huge implications later on for that. And so hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, definitely let us know. Um, maybe I'll share a quick story too. So what happened was uh, one of my friend's moms, right, actually had this situation and she was diagnosed with, with cancer and her insurance had the regular occupation for two years. And then the fine print was really sneaky. It changed to any occupation afterwards, right? So this woman, she was working at her job, she got cancer and so she couldn't do her job. And so they, hey, right, we're gonna pay you out your discipline insurance that lasted for two years, right? But after two years, because she could still do another job, right? Not her current job, but she could do any other job. They said, hey, sorry, you're not gonna be able to claim your insurance anymore. So even today, she has cancer, but she's working at another job. It pays her less money, but she still has to work at that job. Okay, okay so we'll keep on going here. All right, and you guys might be realizing like we're basically like halfway through the presentation and we're still talking about level one, okay? And the reason why is because it's really, really important. And for me, when I first learned about personal finance, I got a slap on the wrist for my Uncle Sonny, who is uh, the guy who manages net worth between 20 and 50 million. He's like, you don't really understand level one. And even Ivan was like, you don't really understand level one. Like you want to talk about investing, you want to talk about the higher levels, uh, but you don't really understand level one. And this is why you really need to know level one, okay? So I'll let you guys read this because it's probably a little bit small here. Actually, I'll read it out for you. So uh, here's some three key statistics, okay? These are Canadian statistics, okay? First of all, the odds of death before age 65 is one in nine, okay? The odds of contracting a critical illness, that's heart attack, stroke, and cancer, before age 65, that's one in four, okay? And the odds of suffering a disability that lasts longer than five years, that's one in seven, okay? So if you combine these three statistics, that's one in nine, one in four, one in seven, right? This demonstrates that the odds of at least one of these events happening to you before age 65 is 43%, like a coin toss, okay? And this is kind of hard to digest, so I've got this other slide that illustrates it a little bit more cleanly. And so here are 10 of my friends, okay? It's funny because some of you guys actually know some of these guys, which is hilarious. So anyway, so uh, and maybe someone in the room, maybe. Okay, so if you think about this for a second, okay, imagine you have 10 friends, okay? What happens is statistically, by the age of 65, one of your friends will pass away, okay? Two will have a critical illness, so like once again, a heart attack, stroke, or cancer. And two will have a disability that lasts at least five years. And remember, disability doesn't mean that like, you're losing a leg or an arm, right? It means that you're too sick or hurt to do your current job, and so you can't generate an income. Okay? So that's why level one is so important. Um, last two sections here. So we're quickly going to talk about something called the grad program. So just so you know, this section, this slide here, you cannot find it on Google. It's like, like extremely insider information. Okay. And the thing is, if you graduate in one of these fields that are listed here, okay, you have one year to lock in a lifetime discount on your disability insurance. Okay. So for example, if you're like um, in engineering or accounting um, or uh, you're a lawyer, you can get a discount for 25%. If you're like in uh, some good ones like occupational therapy or like a speech language pathologist is like 15%. And like my, my brother's a doctor, for example. So he's med school, he gets a 30% discount for life. So definitely take a picture of this if you guys want to, um, especially if you're in one of these uh, professions because uh, it makes a huge impact down the road. Okay. All right. All right. So, so that was a lot of information. So let's go to a summary. Like I feel like that was like a big fire hose. So I'm gonna just distill everything into this one little slide uh, for you guys to take away. It's the only stuff you can take away because that was a lot of information. So first one is, uh, why do we need insurance? What's well, because regardless of how much money you earn or how good of an investor you are, if any of the three uncontrollable events occur, right, injury, illness, or death, your plan becomes totally relevant. So that's why insurance is level one. Okay? Number two is insurance ensures that you will obtain financial independence and protect your family regardless of what happens in your life. Okay? We quickly talked about the grad program. And the last thing I'll quickly mention is discipline insurance is just one of the three main types of insurance. Uh, just in the interest of time, we only wanted to cover one of them. Probably, arguably, the most important one for you guys in this stage of your life. Okay. So I'll pass to G to talk about the next session. All right, my turn. There's a quick question in the chat, and I'll answer it quickly. And if there are follow-up questions, we can answer it in the Q&A at the end. But the question says, what if you switch jobs and change life insurance? So if you leave an employer and you had some group benefits through that uh, employer, then that life insurance will not follow you, unfortunately. However, you do have options to convert it to a personal policy. And we can talk a little bit about that at the end as well. The other last thing I want to mention when it comes to employee benefits and group uh, group coverage is these documents are usually like 150 pages long. And 
don't know about you guys, but you probably don't have time to read through all that. Uh, or it's really confusing, a lot of fine print. Feel free to just send it over to us and we'd be happy to just take some time to read it for you. We know what to look for, right? So hopefully you, that answers the question. Yep. Yeah, can I pause you for a question? does that make sense? You just tell me in chat if that made sense. But basically, uh, yeah, what John said was like, basically if you switch jobs, yeah, perfect, cool. Yeah, you lose your insurance if you switch jobs because you're covered by that group plan, you're not, if you leave. Go ahead, go ahead. Awesome, all righty. My turn. Um, let's talk about step two. Now that the base foundation is set, the first layer, what do we do next? There's still a few other things that we want to talk about before looking to invest right away. And so here's step number two. We want to eliminate non-mortgage debt. So what does that look like? Well, some of you might have some student loans or other types of loans, and you may be wondering, you know, how fast should I pay it off? Should I be paying it off slower? Uh, well, if you look at the largest millionaire case study ever conducted in North America, the results were for, for people to become consistently become millionaires, it was actually to pay off debt first. And so then the, the next question then is, how does that happen? Well, we want to start off by having a starter emergency fund of $1,000 or one month worth of expenses. And you can break this down to a more digestible sort of a step by thinking of saving $500 twice, right? And in terms of the, the next step there, we essentially want to clear off debt because debt can really tie us down. We might have different opportunities or different callings in life, but all of a sudden we're obligated to pay down this debt that's tying us down. So we like to say modern day slaves are not in chains, but they're actually in debt. And another fun thought exercise you can conduct is this. Imagine you had $30,000 in the bank. You wouldn't go and buy a $30,000 car, but that's actually what people are doing. In fact, they might even buy a $60,000 car and use their future earnings um, to pay for that car, right? And so debt actually made us forget common sense and lock us into these chains. The other thing is, lastly, we don't want you to end up on a Korean game show where people are wearing you as a Halloween costume. So hopefully you guys laugh from that. I've been practicing that joke. Anyways, let's move on. Okay, <laughs> number three. So we have our starter emergency fund, which is step two. We cleared off all our non-mortgage debt. Now, what do we want to do? The next step is to build a full emergency fund. So what does that look like? Well, we want to have a cash savings of three to six months of our expenses kept aside in a high interest uh, sort of environment, but we want to make sure it's in a liquid environment. So what does that mean? Well, we want to be able to access it because emergencies happen when we least expect them. And this number, it can really be different for a number of people. It might actually change over time as well. It might be lower, because maybe you just finished school and you're still living with your parents. And so if that's the case, then even if an emergency happens, you still have food on the table and a place to live versus maybe you're a single parent and now you have dependents to look after. If you lose your job or if you get really sick and in the short term, you don't have any sort of money, then that can be really impactful for not just you, but a number of people. And so all of a sudden you want more, uh, more of an emergency fund in that sense. And so essentially when it comes to these emergencies, there's some examples listed here on the side. Now I want you to imagine, if just one of these happened, how impactful would that be to your current situation now? What if more than one of them happened at the same time, two or three of them? And do you think there's a good chance that many of these may actually happen over and over again throughout your life, right? How impactful would that be? Well, it could actually even be a crisis to your current situation. So the point of an emergency fund is this, an emergency fund turns a crisis into an inconvenience, be able to just shrug it off. The next thing I want to mention is this. This is what's considered normal in North America today. Many people are living paycheck to paycheck. They're simply one step away from a catastrophe. They're just one emergency away from a catastrophe. This is what's considered normal. And so for, for you guys today, we don't want you to be normal. So here's a quick summary of the next steps after your emergency fund planning. The rest of the foundation of your financial plan looks like clearing off debt and having a full emergency fund. So how do we do this? We start off with the starter emergency fund, and then we look to eliminate the debt. Why do we do this? It's because modern day slaves are not in chains, they're in debt. It ties us down, it locks us in. We're obligated to do this thing that, you know, our, our cash flow doesn't belong to us anymore, but it instead goes to someone else's pocket. And this small emergency fund essentially protects us while we do focus on clearing off our debt. Once we have that clean slate, then we want to build a full emergency fund that keeps us afloat in case of any unexpected one-off expense that may come. Uh, and these may be multiple at the same time. And so this turns that crisis into an inconvenience. 
and in North America, unfortunately, right now, the stats are high. It's normal to be living paycheck to paycheck and just to be one crisis away um, from a total uh, terrible situation. We don't want that to be normal for you, so don't be normal. And let's have a quick pause here and a, just a quick check-in. Annie, if you're able to throw in a quick poll just to see where everyone's at, where we're curious to know which step are you at today. So maybe you've never even considered these steps before, and it's the first time you're actually revising or looking over your current financial situation. But as of today, knowing now that these are the four steps, which step are you on? Step one is, have you had a good chance to review your insurance plan? Number two is, did you save your first thousand dollars? Step three is, have you cleared off all non-mortgage debt? And step four, do you have a full emergency fund? And I think like I was probably not the only one that got lost to find out what the poll is. So in the bottom right hand corner, like down in the very bottom, there's like the triangle square and the circle. I mentioned it quickly before, but there it is in the bottom right hand corner uh, to go to the polls. Yeah. We'll give it a few more seconds. Already, already. I don't know if anybody caught um, Jacob's the <laughs> the the reference with uh, the card and whatnot. I don't know if they can see it unless you're talking. Oh, maybe it's too small unless I. Lean in. I don't know. <laughs> no, I saw. I'm like, I'm like, is that the good gauge? I couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. It's okay on the screen. Yeah. yeah, it's not. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe we can actually just take a look at the the poll now. Already, so a lot of people actually have step four. Perfect, perfect. That's great because what we're about to talk about next then will be very relevant to your situation. So we just talked about building that foundation of your financial plan. Oh, it looks like a few more votes are coming in. Essentially everyone's at step four except just a small handful of people at steps two and three. Well, the next step really is to look at investing then. How do we grow our wealth? And the point on this slide is essentially you have not earned the right to start investing until you have completed steps one through four in order first. Once you complete those steps, then we can talk about investing. Now let's talk about it. I'm hoping many of you haven't seen this before, so it'll blow your minds. But even if you have seen it before, I think it'll still blow your mind. But let's take a look. Imagine we have person A and person B here. They both invest $3,000 per year and get 9% return year over year. Let's just say for simple math's sake. Person A will invest for the first 10 years, as you can see, and then they'll stop investing for the rest of their life. Person B, on the other hand, they'll wait for the first 10 years and they'll start when person A stops and they'll continue to invest. By the end of 45 years, who do you think will have more money? Throw in the chat. Let's just see what are everyone's guesses. Person A, 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 everyone's got it. Okay, I'm going to move on. <laughs> everyone's guessing it. We get it. We get it. You guys are smart. Uh, but yeah, you guys are absolutely right. As you can see, person A invested only $30,000 in their lifetime compared to person B who invested 108000 But the total amount they have is actually greater than person B. And so why is that? Well, it's because compound interest, how it works is you get your 9% on top of the, the last 9% on top of the last 9%, on top of, and just keep stacking up, it exponentially grows. And the curve looks like something like a hockey stick. And so the earlier you start, essentially, the sooner you can reach that financial independence, which brings us to the next slide. But let's actually take a real life example. I think bubble tea might be the more appropriate example, um, but maybe you love coffee, whatever the case might be. I'm gonna introduce to you guys something called a compound calculator and show you what's the real cost of coffee. And I love doing this exercise because even as I do it over and over again, it's still just mind blows. Um, but let's talk about it. So here's a calculator that essentially shows us based on how much we invest, how much can we expect to see as a result of our investment? So the first part is the initial investment. We're gonna keep this zero because we're poor right now. Uh, for monthly contribution, let's take a look. Imagine you had, let me pull up my calculator. Let's just say a cost of coffee is $5 and let's just say 30 days in a month. So $150, let's just say uh, a cup of coffee a day. And let's say you start at age 20 and you start saving this instead of spending it. 
So 45 years, because age 20 to 65, let's say, is typically when people want to retire. And again, we're going to say 9% for our annual interest rate. It'll, uh, it'll compound every year. And if we hit, oh, oops, I think I put a space bar. There you go, zero. If we hit calculate, then it shows us in 45 years, just with $5 a day, it'll turn into just under a million dollars, which is pretty mind blowing. But this is what I want you to all see. We can see here, this red line shows us the future value, how much it's going to be compared to, you can see the green down here, total contributions. So again, you only put in the $81,000, but it grew to just under a million. That is the impact of compound interest. Oh, sorry. Where's my presentation? Ah, here it is. Alrighty, moving on. So again, the point of this example was to show you the, the earlier you start investing, the sooner you can reach financial independence. Okay. So step five, after having your foundation completely set is to save and invest 20% of our after-tax household income exclusively for retirement. So this isn't for your house. This isn't for your wedding. This isn't for your Corgi's new raincoat. It says exclusively for retirement. On the other hand though, if you are younger, you may have the advantage of youth. You may actually get away with saving something like 20, 10 to 20%. And unfortunately we don't mean young at heart, we mean young in age. Uh, so if you're under 25 or so, you may get away with being able to save 10 to 20% of each paycheck. Uh, this might be a good place to start, uh, especially if you're not sure where to start. But lastly, this is a conversation I love to have with my own clients. It has to do with over saving. It's really useful to know how much you should be saving month to month because you may actually may even be at risk of over saving and sacrificing lifestyle today when you don't have to. I mean, what if during that time you could have had a big Whistler trip with your closest friends or pay off your parents' mortgage or pay off your little sister's education, right? Retirement planning is not just planning for the end, but it's also taking into consideration the journey along the way. Our concern is that you may have a bank account full of money when you hit retirement, but an empty photo album. So if you tell me that family is really important to you, then I actually wanna see money going to your family. Show me your bank account and I'll show you where your heart is. And so here is an investing summary of step five. Essentially, we wanna save and invest 20% of each paycheck for retirement. Again, if you, are, if you do have the advantage of youth, then time is on your side. 10 to 20 may be enough. If you're not sure exactly how much you should be saving, then you can talk to an advisor about this. But the point is this, the earlier you do, you do start, the sooner you can reach financial independence. And based on that cost of coffee compound calculator exercise we did, even if you start with $5 a day, your money can really grow to be quite a lot. And we've made it to the summary of the nine steps. So up to this point, we had a lot of information just thrown at you. And some of it may be completely new. Some of it may be a review. Some of it may, may be a review in a different angle. But this is really the slide that we want you to know and understand because it summarizes that nine step process that you wanna follow. So the first step looks at, again, building the proper foundation. So looking at disability, critical illness and life insurance. And uh, Jacob mentioned that there's three different types of insurance. These are the total three that we typically talk about, uh, but we only talked about disability insurance today for the sake of time. The next uh, part of our foundation is we want to essentially save $1,000 or one month worth of expenses. This again is the starter emergency fund so that we can pay off our debt. We can focus on clearing off our non-mortgage debt. And then from there, we wanna have a full emergency fund that will keep us afloat in case of any major uh, emergencies so that we can continue to take steps forward in life and never backwards, even if these uncontrollable things happen. And the reason we wanna focus on this is because your plan is only as good as its weakest link, right? And I'm sure we can all resonate with this because we probably had a group member who never, you know, did their part in a group project. Uh, you know, they, they tell us, oh, I'll have it done by Thursday, no reply. I'll have it done by Friday, no reply. And then you just end up doing it. The plan is only as good as the weakest link. Okay, you guys. So that's why this is really important. So with that being said, the first four steps must be done in order. Once this foundation is built, then we can look to build our wealth. How do we do this? Well, we can start to think about saving for the long term. Invest 20% of our after-tax income. 
And these three steps we didn't have a chance to talk about today for time's sake, but we actually have a recording of a talk that Jacob and I actually did for Simon Fraser University that looks at the entire process and we actually chat about these three steps as well. And the last step here is to build wealth and be outrageously generous. So again, we started with this, but we also wanna end with it because we're not concerned about how much money you, you earn or how much you are able to save and grow, but it's actually we're more concerned about who you become. And let's talk about this. So the last slide here, step nine in more detail, build wealth and be outrageously generous. What does this look like? By the time you get to the nine steps here, you're gonna be so good at building wealth. Our biggest concern is that the entire reason, you may forget the entire reason you're even building wealth in the first place. And that's why we actually encourage you to be giving throughout these nine steps. And you can even ask yourself these two questions as well. Number one, if you can't be generous now, then how can you promise to be generous later? You may be thinking, I'm gonna save as much as I can now so I can become in a position to give later. But if that's the case, if you can't give $5 now, then how can you promise to give $5,000 later? Here's another point. Traditional wealth management focuses on building wealth but again, we're more concerned about who you become. And that's because money is just a tool. It makes you more of what you already are. It makes selfish people more selfish and it makes generous people more generous. So that's what we want you to think about. We don't want you to become like this guy. If you know, you know. And before we wrap up our conversation here today. We have a quick feedback form. It's four questions and we'd love to just get your thoughts on um, what was helpful, what was useful, um, these sort of things here. So I'm going to throw the link into the chat here. If you guys could just take, literally takes one minute uh, to, to run through it and then you'll actually be entered into a draw uh, for an Amazon gift card. So let me get the link here. I'll throw it in the chat. Yeah, and right after this, we're also going to do like a one big summary slide and then two case studies uh, that are really applicable for you guys. And I want to do the Q&A, uh, that way you guys can have some more practical stuff that's more catered to your specific situation. So hopefully this, this link works. All right, we'll yeah, give sure. you guys a minute to run through that. Do you feel like putting your guitar on the man? Uh, hey. It's all yours. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's our thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll grab it. Yes. <laughs> Actually, maybe Wilson can join you. I saw his guitar, too. Oh, yeah, Wilson. I saw some guitars on your end, too. We can do a little duet. There, that's a, that's a, that's an Enoch thing. <laughs> we'll to go to. I'll come down to, uh, to, what's it called, to Vancouver, and we can play. We can have jam sesh. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I'll play. <laughs> I feel like this is the tavern music that you'd go in like Diablo 3. I was feeling that too. Like, welcome adventure. Yeah. <laughs> please, uh, please rest here. That was reflection from Mulan in case. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. I've awesome. actually heard you play that before. Oh really? Yeah, I haven't. Oh, I'll get, I'll get. it's a banger. <laughs> it's a classic. Awesome. Okay, I think that might be enough time for everybody. It's literally like four questions. So we'll just continue on here. Boom. Alrighty. Jacob, do you want to wrap us up here? Yep, sounds good. You can just use the cursor and, and uh oh, sure. over one time. Yeah, so full okay. summary of everything we talked about. That was a full hour. I don't know if you guys realized it, but that was 
maybe it went by fast, it went by fast for me. So quick summary of everything we talked about. Um, why do we need insurance? The reason why is because regardless of how much income you earn or how good an investor you are, if any of the three uncontrollable events, whether it's critical illness, uh, injury, illness, or death, right? When one of those events occur, uh, basically, basically your entire financial plan will fall apart. Right? A second thing we talked about was eliminating debt. And the key thing we talked about is modern day slaves being in chains. Uh, modern day slaves are not in chains, they're in debt. Right? I think that's pretty contemporary too. You can see even the way that Squid Game talked about this kind of stuff. Right? We talked about the emergency fund. Uh, that's three to six months of expenses, right? And the reason that's so important is because an emergency fund will turn a crisis into an inconvenience. Uh, fourth thing we talked about was investing, and that's 20% of each paycheck should be going towards your retirement. For you guys who are a little bit younger, maybe 10 to 20% is more appropriate, right? We also talked about the risk of oversaving. And last thing we'll mention is uh, the earlier you start investing, the sooner you can reach financial independence, right? And last thing we talked about. Uh, Wait, uh, he's got a lot of the song. Oh, yes, some applause. Yeah, he's trying to get that risk. Dan, no. That's good. Cool. And then last thing is, uh, yeah, money being just a tool. Like money is a tool and it makes you more of what you are, right? So it'll make selfish people even more selfish and it'll make generous people even more generous. Right? So giving is a huge part of our process. Um, and it's just, uh, yeah, like basically, if you're not doing this part, it kind of defeats the purpose of like why we're building wealth in the first place. Right? Cool. So we're we'll the last part here. And this is uh, questions. But we'll go to uh, a case the afterwards, but we'll just take any questions first if anyone has any. I think we got some private questions even before uh, we started this thing too. So we can open this up. So a question from Graham first. Well, uh, read that out first, uh, G. Sorry, what was that? I want to read Graham's question while I open up the side questions here. Oh, sure. Um, was it put, oh, what, do you mean the life insurance question? Uh, let's see, Graham asks, Will this presentation recording be shared with participants? Uh, uh, yes, sir. You bet. I mean, you're one of the people that can just call us up directly. Yeah. But yes, you may also watch the recording online. Yeah. Yeah. Anything for you, my man? Um, another question here from uh, Amira or Amira Friedman. Uh, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but uh, what is the best thing to do in terms of insurance if you know you'll likely switch jobs many times throughout your career? Is it possible to get insurance independently? Great question. Really good question. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of, yeah, that's one of the risks of only relying on your, your group insurance, right? It's what if you do end up switching jobs or what if you end up wanting to become self-employed in the future? And the other thing is eventually you will probably leave your job uh, because you'd like to retire. So in that case, how can you make sure you have insurance even after that? That's why it does make sense to at least consider what does it look like to have an in independent insurance plan as a part of your financial plan? Yeah, most people will usually get uh, their own. You can actually, uh, you can unmute them, unshare screen. Jeez, oh, yeah. see everyone. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just to answer your question, um, most people will actually get um, their own private insurance. Um, not only is it possible, but most people will do, right? You know, like basically public washrooms are not as good as private washrooms, right? In the same way, uh, you probably want to have your own individual insurance a lot of the time. Yeah. And let me just switch my settings here. Another question from Kiona, let's see. It says, what do you recommend for investments? Roth IRA, mutual funds, index funds. Kiona, are you in uh, the US by any chance? Yes, okay, cool. I, I saw somebody sign up from Seattle, so I'm guessing that might be you. Yeah. Uh, so to answer this question, it's more like a, it's dependent on someone's personal situation because uh, there's a few like pros and cons to each one. There's no, like, there's no right answer, um, but it really depends on someone's personal situation. So if you want to stay behind afterwards or just like chat with us uh, offline afterwards, then we can give you a more direct answer. Yeah, sorry I can't answer your question totally directly right now. Yeah, but it's a really good question. Hmm. Cool, I'm just gonna open up some of these side questions that we had earlier at G. Sure. Someone asked a little while ago about how to pay student loans off as fast as possible. Uh, do you, you think you want to answer that question? 
It's a pretty, it's pretty cool. Wait, one. where are you seeing this? I don't see it. Wait, sorry, what was the, what was the question? Uh, Getting it's, um, as fast as possible. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, there's a few different methods or strategies in, in terms of um, paying off debt. I'll mention this. It, there's a there's a strategy called the debt snowball method, and this is also mentioned in our last presentation as well. So you guys can check out that recording. But essentially, what we want to do is we want to take into consideration human psychology along with our personal finances, and we want to establish many wins along the way. So if you have a number of different types of debt, what you can do is aim to knock down the the smallest amount the the debt with the smallest amount and then clear that off then aim for the next one and so what this encourages you to do is you see that you're oh you're clearing off each debt one at a time and that really just helps motivate you to continue on in terms of specifically uh knocking down student loan debt again all we want to do is have that float starter emergency fund set in place and then just take all your cash flow throw it over there uh if you were wondering how can i make sure i have as much cash flow as possible, that's where essentially budgeting strategies come in. So you have a sense of control over how much you're actually earning and spending, and you can expect yourself to be able to set aside this much uh, towards the debt. If that amount is $1,000, let's say, you can implement a strategy called paying yourself first. So before even looking to spend on um, groceries or uh, movie tickets or anything like that, you take that $1,000 and you pay off the debt first, and then you spend whatever is left over for the rest of the month. So that's a few different strategies involved, but hopefully it's uh, valuable information for you. Yeah, I would say the first one is just paying yourself first. So each time you get your paycheck, you pay off your student loan first before you pay your other stuff. That's kind of separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah second question. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I just realized, uh, Amira or Amira, I actually remember your name from the last workshop. And so, yeah, I remember because I couldn't had a hard time pronouncing it last time too. So good to see you again. Yeah. Um, passive income sources uh, for risk averse people. Um, how do we, I feel unprepared and anxious about taking care of finances. How do we start? So in terms of passive income, uh, this is like a huge discussion that uh, Gene and I are actually doing another workshop later on about just investing specifically. But in the meantime, this is uh, one of the, I just add, add a link to the chat there. This investing uh, book totally transformed so many people's lives. And I literally recommend it to pretty much every single one of my clients and my friends. So uh, if you're not sure how to uh, invest, especially in a way that's if you're risk averse or if you're not really sure uh, where to start, um, this book is incredible and it's built for Canadians too. So hopefully it's really practical for you guys. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Maybe let's see one more question here. Let's see. Yeah, and so there's another question here that said, what investments can I make now that don't include buying a house because they're not ready yet? Uh, very similar. Um, this book will probably teach you like the majority that you need to know. So like that book, we don't talk about investing as much just because that book encapsulates a whole bunch of it. Um, yeah, but G and I will be talking about that uh, in another workshop coming down the road. But um, yeah, this one pretty much answers most of the questions. So, so Jimmy, maybe we'll share the screen again and then we'll just go to a quick case study. Sure thing. Boom. Cool. Okay, and if you're so... ever in a position where you don't want to read the book, you can just message us and we'll happily just <laughs> give you the main points too. <laughs> That's true too. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, imagine this for a second. Let me just change my uh, layout here. Okay. So here's Kelly. Uh, she's an engineer who is single and lives at home but wants to move out. Okay. So she earns about 75K per year, which is typical of someone living in Vancouver, Toronto. Um, and so after tax, that's sixty thousand dollars. So hopefully this relates to some of you guys who are kind of in that age area, maybe also um, studying something similar, right? And so uh, this is going to be a whole bunch of words that pop up here. We're just going to break down uh, one section at a time. So uh, you can imagine like the nine steps that we talked about, right? It's kind of a framework that people have, but we need to break this down into different pieces, right? So after Kelly pays tax of about twenty percent, right? The first thing she does is she gives about ten percent of her income. So if you follow the process, this is kind of maybe something that would, uh, something that you could do, for example. So 10%, that's kind of a lot for a lot of people, but that's uh, a great place to start. So she gives $600, $600 per month, and she puts that towards giving, right? The next thing she does is she goes to make sure her insurance is in place. So she checks her insurance, uh, her insurance at work, and she finds out that two of the red flags are present. She says, wow, my regular occupation definition expires after two years. It changes to any occupation definition. So it goes from the good insurance to the bad insurance after two years, right? And also, there's no indexing for inflation, right? And so her purchasing power is going to go down over time. Right? She also checks for critical illness insurance, right? And she realizes that there's some at her work, right? 
but there's not enough there. And so she's like, okay, that's a concern too. Uh, right now, her life insurance, this is the third type of insurance, not a pressing need because she has no one dependent on her income. So she doesn't have a house, she doesn't have any children, right? So she's not too worried about that. And then she's like, oh, you know, I'm an engineer. So actually I have a discount, a special discount for life on my insurance. So that's the section that we look at for Kelly, for example. And she's like, oh, this is the stuff that I had to take care of in section one, level one, right? And she moves to step two and she says, okay, um, let's see how we're gonna eliminate the non-mortgage debt, okay? So for her, she has student loans in the past, but because she has a high paying income, she's 25 years old, she's been out of school for a few years, she's actually paid this income, this student loan off already, okay? Uh, part four is that she has her emergency fund. And so she lives at home still, right? But she wants to move out. So when her expenses are really low, let's say that she pays like 600 per month for rent for her family. And the other 600 per month, she's spending, maybe she's on, uh, going to restaurants or like buying some clothes and those kind of things. And that's her expenses, right? And so her three month emergency fund, which right, is smaller. So we can have three to six months of an emergency fund. Hers is a little bit smaller towards the three month because she lives at home, right? And so she's okay having an emergency fund that's uh, $1,200 times three months. So $3,600. Okay? And then basically we want to make sure that uh, she's investing for the long term for her retirement as well. So now that her four, first four steps are in place, her foundation is really good, right? Then she can make sure that she can do step five now, which is investing for the long term. So basically like step five is to start investing 20% of household income. And for her, uh, 10 to 15% is sufficient. And when she looks at her group uh, her group documents at work, she has some group matching, which means that every time that she puts money into her retirement accounts, her employer also puts money into the retirement accounts. So that's really fantastic. And so she puts 10% of her money there, which is about $600, right? And step six, and this is the part we didn't talk about, right? But step six, um, if you guys decide to watch it later on, um, this is where we want to leave someone's, uh, make sure that someone's housing payment, so the rent, right, is less than 25% of the monthly income. But in places like Vancouver and Toronto, it's really hard. If you're first starting out, if you're age 25, you're really early on, less than 40% is where you want to aim for. Okay? So for uh, Kelly, for example, her income after tax is $60,000, right? And so 40% of that is $2,000. And 25% of that is $1,250, right? And so the key thing for Kelly is a lot of people want to know, when can I move out of my parents' house responsibly, right? When can I move out responsibly? And especially if you were in China, it's really tough. But for Kelly, that number is between $1,250 and $2,000 per month. And that doesn't mean necessarily that she's going to go out and buy a one bedroom, like a rent a one bedroom. She might get a roommate, right? One or two roommates, and she's able to split that cost as long as her rent on her own is something between $1,250 and $2,000. So hopefully that gives you guys uh, a somewhat clear explanation of how the nine steps work and how to actually apply it in real life. And once again, that was done pretty quickly. So if you guys have any questions, then uh, we can definitely reach out to G and I afterwards. Okay. Yeah, so I think that kind of wraps us up for uh, today. G, any fun thoughts there? No, yeah, no, we just love talking about this stuff. And so, yeah, if you really just feel free to hit us up afterwards if you have any questions. Um, if you know anybody who would also appreciate having conversations with us, then we would love to talk to them. But Ultimately, yeah, Jacob and I, we we love this. Um, you know, we were we were talking about this on the weekends. We talk about it in our free time as well. Um, so this is really our life calling, and uh, we're just really blessed to be able to even have this platform to to speak to you guys today. But okay, without further ado, then I can bring us to the last slide and allow Annie and Enoch to wrap us up here. I just want to say quickly, um, thank you to both Jonathan and Jacob for the amazing workshop. I'm pretty sure everyone here are, have learned a lot and it's very, very insightful. Love the beans too. Before I continue, Enoch, is there anything you want to um, specifically say to the group or give insights on? <laughs> Why are we on that? Not to put your um, spot, yeah, nothing really much. Just um, super proud of Jonathan and Jacob who have only been in industry for a couple of years, but honestly, they speak like veterans and the amount of work they do, um, honestly, is just so, so high quality. Um, so super cool just to see them continue to lead. And I've seen them make presentations to, to many different schools. And yeah, down the pipeline, there's different schools that they'll be speaking at across. And maybe, so it's, just, yeah, really just proud of, of what they've done. Uh, thank you, Boss Lady Collective, for having us here um, to help out and yeah and i'm just here as a fly on the wall <laughs> but super excited these conversations because yeah financial literacy is at an all-time low and i think it's such an important conversation 
um, um, to really learn. So thank you, um, Annie, for hosting us and for everyone for, for attending. So I'm just super stoked. Thanks, Lena. And again, like this workshop is recorded, so we'll be sending this to you either by tonight or before the weekend ends once the workshop is uploaded onto YouTube. Um, yeah, so if you do have any more questions, feel free to reach out directly to Jonathan, Jacob, Enoch, directly at Resby Finance. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to chat with you afterwards. Um, and if you have any interest for our future workshops, definitely stay tuned to Bossy Collective um, at our Instagram handle for more information there as we do have one workshop coming up next week regarding about job searching and the tech industry. So again, thank you all for joining us today and have a great rest of the weekend as well as Halloween and hope you guys have amazing costumes lined up. Great, talk to you all soon.